Hello, my name is Mandela and these are my favorite books of 2018! Whoa! I read 44 books this year and today I will share with you my top 10 of them that are available in English. Because I also read a couple of wonderful Swedish books that unfortunately aren't translated into English, which is stupid because then I can't mention them here. Anyways, back to the list. Number 10 to number 5 is in no particular order. They're all floating at the same place. But number 4 to number 1 is uh, in a very precise order. Where number 1 is my ultimate favourite book of 2018. Let's begin with number 10 on the list. Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner. This book follows a deaf Indian girl who has been adopted by a American lesbian deaf couple. <laughs> Whoa! That's something to begin with. And uh, this girl has always gone to a uh, school for the hearing impaired. However, she's recently been expelled because she has drawn graffiti on school property. And now she has to go to a normal school. And not only did I enjoy learning about deaf culture, I also loved that street art was such a big part of this book. Coming in at number 9 is Magnus Chase and the Hammer of Thor. The second book in the Magnus Chase trilogy by Rick Riordan and I read the whole series this year but number two was my favorite. The books follow this 16 year old homeless boy, Magnus Chase obviously, who finds out that he's the son of the god Frey. And then he discovers that our modern world is filled with Norse mythology and that the Norse gods are still alive. I'm Swedish and I really 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 enjoyed Wilder's take on Norse mythology. The only thing that was weird was that I listened to it on audiobook and it was very very strange to hear all of these Nordic names pronounced in English. Anyways, that's beside the point. As always, Wilder's books are hilarious. They always put me in a good mood. And I also love how great the representation was in this series. Uh, he included a deaf character, two Muslim characters, and also a genderqueer character. And I think he portrayed this character in such a easy, fun and accessible way and that's just what you need sometimes. Number eight on my list is the first book in the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin. These books are actually too brutal for me, but Martin's way of creating interesting characters as well as a very, very, very intriguing plot, not to mention his world that he has built, this medieval inspired world with glimpses of fantasy. Totally makes up for it. So I still has to put it on my list. Over to book number seven, which is The Wonderful Adventures of Nels by the Swedish authoress Selma Lagerlöf. The main character, Nils, gets turned into a little gnome due to his despicable behavior. Then he accidentally finds himself on the back of a goose and then he follows this pack of geese all throughout Sweden, discovering every corner and oh, Lagerlöf writes about the Swedish people and nature with such warmth, love and respect. It was written a hundred years ago so it also contains a lot of recent history I didn't know about and this book basically made me fall in love with my own country and made me want to visit every single part of Sweden which is kind of unique because we Swedish are a bunch of people who thinks our country is just cold and why would anyone want to visit it? We would rather travel to Spain or Thailand or some country, warm country like that. 
Coming in at number six is Truth is a Personal Matter by another Swedish authoress, Sara Lööfestam. This is an extremely unique crime novel that follows an illegal immigrant who says that he's a detective to earn some money. Such an awesome idea and the novel is also very like psychological so uh, it, it's awesome guys please read it coming up at number five is the hidden life of the trees by peter wuchlimpin this is a non-fiction book about trees and i would highly recommend this to anyone who has the slightest interest in nature <laughs> this completely changed my view on trees and i feel so much more for them now. Wachlin Ben teaches you the most fascinating things about trees, like how in old woods the roots are connected to each other, so if one tree is starving, another tree can give you nutrition. Because it's simply better for everyone in the forests if everyone survives. And it's kind of like socialism and it makes me so happy. <laughs> Moving on to the top four books of this year, first we have at number four Queer, There and Everywhere by Sarah Prager. This book tells the story of 23 real LGBTQ plus people throughout history. And in the beginning it also gives you a brief history about how queer people have been treated throughout time at different places in the world. And this book lifted a weight from my chest. It made me cry a couple of times of relief and because I was so moved of the stories. You know, sometimes as a LGBTQ plus person you can feel like Maybe today is the extreme, you know, because maybe it's extreme that we allow gay marriage and so on. But reading this, especially reading the quick history in the beginning, shown me that it isn't weird, it isn't the extreme. This has been allowed at many places throughout history and that made me cry. <laughs> it almost makes me tear up now because it was so important to me to read and I would highly, highly, highly recommend this book to anyone who identifies as LGBTQ+. It will be so good for your mental health and I also would encourage everyone who's not LGBTQ+, to read this book too because I think it's a necessity. I think both from a historical perspective but also to understand basically the LGBTQ plus people around you. The bronze medalist of this year is Call Me By Your Name by Andrew Simon. I'm sure every one of you had heard about the movie but this is the book that inspired the movie and it contains even more feels. Ah! I just had to scream, okay? I just had to. I love the love that these two men find for each other over the course of six weeks in the Italian summer. Mm, this is my favorite love story ever. Over to the silver medalist of this year, and this is Too Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. This is the first book in a series of four and it's hard to describe this book in a way that makes it justice because a lot of the things that is so great about this book is spoiler things but basically it's utopian slash utopian with a bit of sci-fi and fantasy and the language is mesmerizing she has so many cool words i never heard before and the way the narrator speaks to Rita is something i've never seen before and 
it contains so many mind-blowing ideas and the best way I can describe this book is that it tore me into pieces and I bled but then it put me back together in a better way than I was before. That's how good the book was. Now we have come to my ultimate favourite of the year and that is The Memory of Light by Francisco X. Stork. This book was such an important read for me personally. It's about this girl who attempts suicide and she then she gets treated at a hospital by this amazing, I don't know what I should call her, counsellor or something. And she also meets these three other teenagers who's there for various different reasons. And you you feel so much for every character and it describes depression and suicidal thoughts in a way that really spoke to my own. And I'm almost tearing up here because it's so personal. But it also focuses on living in a way that doesn't simplify it. It is like, stay positive and think good thoughts and then everything will work out. No, it takes things very, very seriously. And it gave me hope, it gave me so much hope. And I think I also will do a book talk about this book. Anyways, I would recommend this book to anyone who has suffered from any of these things or to anyone who has had someone close to them suffer from these things. I think it portrays them in a very true way. <laughs> now I feel like we're leaving each other on such a sad note, but that was everything for today's video. I hope you got some book recommendations from me and I hope you also pick one up, especially one of the top four. They are awesome. But that was everything for today. Take care of yourself and the people around you and the earth. Bye.